Young World, LOD321, LOD versus the internet. I just want to talk a little bit about um, Throwback Thursday. Actually, my cousin brought this to my attention, but he was saying about how Throwback Thursday is really FBI surveillance uh, facial recognition program. And it makes total sense, you know what I mean? It definitely makes, he told me this a while ago. It makes perfect sense because Facebook in itself, you know what I mean, when Facebook came out, there was a quote that the F, there was an FBI, somebody from the FBI said it, or the CIA, I'm gonna see if I can find it. The quote was um, something about, along the lines of people participate, people participating, um, how to make people participate in their own surveillance and investigation on their self without them knowing. And that's what Facebook basically was and is, is in a nutshell. And the, the, the funny thing about it, it's all self-sufficient, you know what I mean? They don't have to, do, and nobody has to do nothing except go on and look. Everything that you want to find out is on there. Everybody puts, you know how Facebook and, and social media is. Everybody puts, some people put every motherfucking thing. I ate this, I went here, I did that, they came here, they went. That's what social media is. It's a self-sustained, self-investigative, data tracking, data collecting tool for the powers that be. You know what I mean? So. The throwback Thursday thing, when I first got into the conscious community, the conspiracy community, when I first, I always, always kind of been in it since far as I can remember, I always had certain, certain um, words or certain terms and certain ideas always felt familiar to me, you know what I'm saying, growing up, so when I started learning about them, I was just like, oh shit, this really does mean something, but when I really got into it, it was about 2006, when I had what I call a spiritual awakening, you know what I mean, I went on a mission for a couple years of just learning, watching, reading, researching, listening to everything. There's so much stuff I consumed, so much different information I came by. Same when I first got into the, to it back in 2006, the biggest thing going on then was they were talking about putting cameras up. That was a lot what everybody in the conspiracy community was saying. They're gonna put up cameras. Everybody that was against it was saying, you sound crazy, you are paranoid. They all, they all sound like a bunch of idiots, a bunch of retards. And within that same like two years when I first got into it, cameras started popping up everywhere. You know what I mean? Like literally everywhere. Where I live at, all the all the highways that are around here, every exit, every entrance got a camera on it. If you look above, if you don't look for it, you won't see it. But there's a camera at every exit. Most inner city areas where certain stuff happens, there's cameras on damn near every block. And the funny thing about all these cameras around here is the whole time all these cameras been out here where I live at. I haven't hardly seen them solve any crime. Hardly none of the cameras I've been credited with really caught, really solving any crime, like for real, for real. But maybe a couple of things here and there, but not as much as you would think for all the cameras that are around here. So the thing was back then, the, the cameras were gonna pop up, but they really contained were facial recognition. It was all about getting your face, facial recognition software, um, logging data, <clears throat> logging the data of your face and also associating your face with a number that would be um, be able to be tracked by all the satellites, all the cameras everywhere. Cause like on a TV show called Person of Interest, if you heard of that, every camera, this machine can pick up every camera from everywhere. And no matter if it's a closed circuit camera, if it's a private security camera, somebody's house camera, a store's camera, the thing that's running it can see everything, it can pick up on all of it. It's like one brain, the whole entire thing is like one brain. It sounds crazy, but then the other day I was sitting up in here, there was an Amber Alert. A kid got, um, I think it was just ended up being like somebody's kid, their dad or something like that. And that'd be an Amber Alert. It's just sometimes be the kid's father snatched them up. Whatever the case may be, I got like four or five old phones in here that I use from this, especially since I've been doing YouTube, I bought like two different phones. So I got like old phones anyway. I swear I had about like three or four of them were on. Sometimes when I record, do certain stuff, I want to look up different stuff. So I don't know, I can watch something. I use different phones, you know what I mean? But three of them phones were not, they're not, they're not the Wi-Fi wasn't on or they've been out of service. Every phone that was turned on in this house got an Amber Alert on it. Every single one of them. And that was the first time I, that I, re I realized that. The last time there was an Amber Alert, I don't remember that happening, but this was about less than a month ago, maybe about three weeks ago, I think it was. Every phone in here started beeping. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Amber Alert, Amber Alert. How, how you got an Amber Alert? How you get a service through a phone that's not even connected or not even hooked up to Wi Fi? And besides that, you can also know that just from the fact that you can make an emergency call with any phone, even if it's not a service. So that right there it tells you that anything can be accessed no matter what. You know what I mean? Any Anything that has metal in it and electricity in it 
can be accessed through the super through the super machine. And that, that was what the, the big argument was back then when I first got into it. That was the big conspiracy thing. These cameras are coming up. Everybody's gonna be that all the facial recognition that's picked up is gonna be associated with a number. That way they can track you anywhere on any camera, just like on that TV show, a person of interest, then they happen to make a TV show about this whole thing, which which was the person of interest. That's a whole different story within itself, but and that's what it was, and I was like, this is crazy, and, and nobody really knows how Throwback Thursday actually started. I looked it up, some people were saying it started on this one dude's site, there's like a site called Actually Throwback Thursday. Other people would say um, that Sports Illustrated credit uh, site names, Nice Kicks, that refer to it as being about sneakers, you know what I mean? Nobody knows for sure, nobody can actually, pin actually pinpoint where it actually started. And for me, I definitely believe that it could definitely be a CIA or FBI um, program that started Throwback Thursday. Cause not only do they get your face every time you log it, every time you hashtag it, you put your name in it, you already got your profile. And then um, then they also get you, when you put Throwback Thursday, they get your whole entire history. Every picture you're putting up from when you was a baby, when you was two, when you was seven, you was five. They got everything in there, you know what I mean? So it just puts it right into your data, right into your file, in your data file on the supercomputer. You're logging your own, you're logging your own personal data into this computer. Is basically what it's about. You know what I'm saying? And when I was on Facebook before, I had like a, a page. I used to do music. I had a lot of friends. I had like a, a decent little, um, it was like a popular type page. And out of nowhere, one day they wanted me to upload a picture of my ID because the, the name I had on there wasn't my regular name. I had Live was hair on there. Like was hair was my last name for it. And out of nowhere, they, do, they they want me to up, uh, update a, um, upload a picture of my real ID, and I was like, hell no, I'm not putting a picture of my ID on there for Facebook. That was like two, three years ago, so I ended up losing that page and starting. Uh, then I started another one. They did the same thing to the other one. It's like a month later. Now I got one. I just got my real name on there, but I don't really f with it. You no, know I don't really be on Facebook like that. But not that that really solves anything. I'm on YouTube. I got Instagram, so either way, they're gonna know who you are regardless. But back then, when this happened to me on Facebook, it just came out of nowhere. I wasn't on YouTube, and I, I kind of thought I was still on that. I'm trying to be on some, I just felt like that was too much, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I wasn't with it, so I didn't do it, but that was spooky enough to me. But then after that, other people, it ha started happening to other people, so now I was like, oh, maybe it's just something they're doing now. But even then, just, just by trying to make you be the real person you are on Facebook, that was even spooky enough back then. But anyway, the whole, point, the whole point of this is to raise the idea that Throwback Thursday could actually be a government psyop, a government operation, a government program, and it sounds like it definitely could be, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's basically what this is about, but if it is, then everybody been doomed a long time ago. The internet has taken over the world for many years, but anyway, that's it, man.